So, we have been discussing about the density operator calculations, density matrix calculations. We introduced last time a specific formalism known as product operator formalism, product operator formalism which will facilitate the calculation of the density operator at any point in time in a pulse sequence. And this we said this is for weakly coupled spin systems, weakly coupled spin systems which is generally valid in most of the modern spectrometers which have very high fields. So, for this means condition was j by delta is much much less than 1. So, in this formalism the density operator is written as a summation of some basis set of operators we, which we wrote it in this form as B s. So, so, this B s set constitutes a complete basis set, this is a complete basis set. So, that any density operator can be expressed as a linear combination of the elements of this complete basis. Okay. So, then we started looking at what these individual basis operators mean. We said these are generally described in terms of the angular momentum operators because it is a very natural thing to do. There are many ways of doing it and we considered the Cartesian angular momentum operators I x, I y and I z for individual spins. Then you can make combinations of these to generate products of uh, 2 spins, 3 spins and things like that which will generate a complete basis set using which we can express the density operator. Now, when we define the basis operators, we also must know what this individual basis operator mean, what does it encode. So, if we want to take the complete matrix, the row as a complete matrix as some uh, huge matrix by n by n matrix or whatever that uh, this thing is and which elements are occupied by the particular basis operator. So, if I want to take a basis operator B s, one particular basis operator, which elements here are occupied by this. So, that actually gives us an information about what is the meaning of a particular basis operator B s. So, in this context we actually looked at 1 spin, 2 spin, 3 spin defined the basis set of operators and we also looked at last time particular operators like i k x okay, and i l x for 1 spin system and also for a 2 spin system and what does it represent, what does i k x represent in this density of density matrix. So, we said okay, this will represent in phase magnetization of k spin, in phase magnetization of k spin likewise it is this if you look at the elements here. So, we had this 1 1 here, 1 1 here, this had 1 1 here and 1 1 here. So, this actually gives the in phase magnetization of the L spin. So, for, for the 2 spin system and this is the 4 by 4 matrix. In the individual case of 1 spin system there will be 2 by 2 matrices, for a 2 spin case there will be 4, 4, 4 by 4 matrices, but we can represent the individual K magnetization or the L magnetization in the 4 by 4 matrix itself to draw a meaning out of that one. And similarly for a, a 3 spin system also we wrote what does a K x would mean in a 3 spin system of k l m and this will be 8 by 8 matrix and obviously it will occupy 4 elements here the, the k x if I have a k l m which is are coupled like this k here l here and m here if all of them are coupled then each one of them is a uh, doublet of a doublet. So, there will be 4 lines for each one of those and these 4 lines will represent occupy 4 elements in this in this complete density operator. And they we saw that they will all have the same signs 
and we will have for the each kx, lx and mx there will be 4 different positions uh, occupied here, 4 different positions on this side and 4 positions on this side occupied to represent the in phase magnetizations of the k, l and m spins. So now we go forward from this so far we are considering only one spin elements in a multiple spin systems. Now we look at the products, products of the operators. So how do we do that and that is what we are going to do today. So let us consider the particular element which we uh, represent as 2 ikx ilz. Okay. So what it means I have 2 this is now a 2 spin product so of ikx and ilz k and l refer to the 2 spins. How do we calculate the matrix representation of this? So we take the matrix of kx here and remember these are for the individual spins. So therefore, these are since these are two independent and separate spins, we have to take the direct product. If this is k spin and this is the l spin and we have the direct product of the k spin and the l spin, the x is 0, 1, 1, 0 and the z operator for the single spin is 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So and now to generate a 4 by 4 matrix, we have to take the direct products of these two matrices. So therefore, at the place where there is a 1, I get this entire matrix here 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Here again where there is 1, I get 1, 0, 0, minus 1 and the other 4 elements will be 0 because you have a 0 here and a 0 here. You multiply 0 by 0 this entire matrix, you get 0 here and a 0 there. Now you notice here this ones represent the single quantum coherences. So if you remember, recall the energy level diagram, the that will tell you we will see that uh, in the next slide and uh, we will exactly know how these ones mean single quantum coherences. So these ones are for the two spin system we have 4 energy levels as we have mentioned and these ones must correspond to those 4 energy levels. This is indicated here explicitly. So we have here the 2 i k x i l z the same matrix represented here and the 4 energy levels of the 2 spin system are alpha k alpha l, alpha k beta l, beta k alpha l and beta k beta l these are the 4 states and therefore these 4 states are 1, 2, 3, 4 on this side and 1, 2, 3, 4 here and therefore I can write these 4 energy states on, on the top here. This is alpha alpha, alpha beta, beta alpha and beta beta and here also alpha alpha, alpha beta, beta alpha and beta beta. So now you see, so what these elements are, so we have this transition, this is the 1, 3 transition which means this is 1, to 3, this is 1 is here and that is the 1, 3 transition here and this is the k transition, k is flipping from alpha to beta and L is remaining the same as alpha. So this is the k transition, right. So therefore we say it is one of the component of the x magnetization of k. And this one is the other transition which you are seeing because it is the element which of the density operator which it has occupied is 2, 4 and the 2, 4 is this. So and this again is alpha k to beta k and so we have here element minus 1 here. But notice one thing that these two have opposite signs, this one is plus 1 and this one is minus 1. So to represent that we put it arrows in this manner, if I put 1, 2, 3 as a positive arrow here to represent positive signal here, then the 2, 4 I represent by a negative sign, this is only a representation to convey the meaning as to what we are trying to say. When we actually measure the magnetizations of these coherences in an NMR experiment, when I get the spectrum, I will get these two lines in this manner. One three line will be positive because it is the plus one here and the two four line will be negative and that is because of the minus sign here and this is going down. So similarly for the KY LZ, I have here the same four states but again once again it is the K spin, okay, LZ L spin in the z direction and ky transverse magnetization is of the k spin. Previously 
the transverse mechanization was with the case pin, but it was x component. So, here we have the y component, this is the product is ky lz. Now, what we see here? We see minus i and i, and this one is represented in the same manner here. Now, once again, you see this you have opposite signs. What is the meaning of opposite signs? First of all, these are imaginary numbers. The imaginary numbers meaning we have a dispersive component. This is a 90 degrees out of phase. So, if I call it x to y, it is a 90 degrees out of phase and this is represented here in the by an imaginary number here. So, we get an i here. So, therefore, if I have 1, 3 as a particular way, if it is in this manner, then the 2, 4 will be opposite to that and therefore, this goes in this manner here. So, you notice here if this is positive going like this, then this has to be negative which is going in this manner. So, accordingly you could have chosen either this way, Okay, you could have chosen this way as uh, a particular sign and this as a particular uh, as an opposite sign, it does not matter. So, you will have the opposite signs for these two signals, but they will be dispersive line shapes. Okay, why magnetization means these are dispersive line shapes. Now, let us look at uh, a product which is k x l y. Now, both these components are transverse components of the k and the l spins. This is x component of the k spin and the y component of the l spin. So, now what we do? So, we have to add here the this again I will put k and this is l. So, for k I have the the operator the, the matrix for the x and that is 0 1 1 0 and for the y I have 0 minus i i 0 this is for the l spin. Now, I have to take the direct product of this and then I get here 0 0 0 minus i 0 0 i 0 0 minus i 0 0 i 0 0 0. It is very interesting you see which elements are occupied here. Remember this was the beta beta state and this side is the alpha alpha state. So, alpha alpha to beta beta that is actually double quantum coherence. So, therefore, this element represents a double quantum coherence. So, therefore, this is the 1 4 element of the energy level diagram and this will be a double quantum coherence and this has a minus sign and it has it is i here. Okay. And now, you also have a non-zero element here and this is i and this represents 2, 3 state, 2, 3 coherence, right. This is energy level 2 and this side is energy level 3 and therefore, I have a 2, 3 here and the 2, 3 state is actually 0 quantum coherence because they are both alpha beta and beta alpha, their m values are 0 and therefore, we have a 0 quantum coherence here. Therefore, and similarly and these are the corresponding uh, complex conjugates in this in this area. So, therefore, this matrix represents a combination of double quantum plus zero quantum coherences. This was k x l y and now if we look at k y l x, let us look at k y l x. So, what I have to do is simply I have to interchange these two. For k I will put 0 minus i i 0 and for l I put here 0 1 1 0. Okay. So, now if I take this data product so, I get here 0, 0, 0 minus i, 0, 0 minus i, 0, 0, i, 0, 0, i, 0, 0, 0. Now, it is the same 4 elements which are populated, which are non-zero here. The difference, however, is that these are minus i, minus i here and the, these are correspondingly i, i. So, therefore, there is a sign difference between these two. If this were to represent dq plus zq, then this will represent one of the elements is changed to minus sign. So, we call it as dq minus zq. So, double quantum minus 0 quantum coherence for this element. So, 2 ky lx is represents dq minus zq. Both of them are of course, are combinations of double quantum and 0 quantum coherences, but they have different signs and therefore, in this case I have dq plus zq, here I will have dq minus zq. So, now what I do? So, I have here the same elements represented here, 2 i k x l y put the same matrices here. 
so I have 0 0 minus i 0 0 i 0 0 minus i 0 0 i 0 0 0 this is a dq plus zq and I put here dq minus zq. Now I take an addition of these two I take a sum of this because in a density operator when we are doing it may be that you will have a combinations of basis operators it we cannot be that you will only have one of them as your density operator. So, your density operator remember is a summation of the various basis operators. So, if I take a combination of these two kx ly and ky lx added over here then what do I get? I get here minus i, I get here i and all the others are 0. That means I get pure double quantum coherence. So, this is the unique way of getting pure double quantum coherence and this is see because it is minus i here we call it as y. Although you cannot represent a double quantum coherence as x as, as on along the any of the Cartesian coordinates as x, y, z, we simply say by convention for the sake of ease of representation, we call this as the y component and this is represented by i here. This is basically imaginary and one could have called them as real and imaginary as well, but uh, for convenience or some convention which has been used, so we call it as pure double quantum y. Now, suppose I do a subtraction of the same two elements i k x i l y here, i k y i l x here and take a subtraction. If I do a subtraction, I will get i and minus i here and all other elements are 0. So, what that means? I get pure 0 quantum y, see the y coherence pure 0 quantum okay? and this remains as minus i i and therefore, it is called as y. Okay. So, now let us look at the other product here to i k x i l x. Now, in this case I have the x components for both k and l spins. So, let me write here once more the these are for the individual spins, this is for k and this is for l. So, once again it is for k and this is for l. So, here this direct product now we will have real numbers you see this product gives me 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0. Once again this is a mixture of double quantum and zero quantum coherences because this is the double quantum this is zero quantum this is the mixture of the two and they have the same sign. So, I represent as mixture of double quantum plus zero quantum here. Now, if I take k y l y then now I have 0 minus i i 0 direct product is 0 minus i i 0 and this gives me once again real numbers here in the 4 by 4 matrix I get here minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1 and all other elements are 0. So, therefore, because of the opposite signs of these two, so this will be represented as double quantum minus 0 quantum. Okay. So, now what we do? We take we do the same trick as we did before. So, we take a summation of these two elements i k x i l x i k y i l y remember this two elements is always there is the normalization factor. So, I get d q plus z q addition d q minus z q I get here 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, therefore, if I take this addition I have only these elements non-zero therefore, I, this will be pure 0 quantum and I call it as x because this is the real number this is not imaginary. Okay. Let me now take the difference if I take the difference then what do I get the same matrices here I take the subtraction here I get here 1. I get here 1 and all other elements are 0. So, what do I get here? Therefore, I get a pure double quantum x coherence. Okay. So, therefore, we have seen from these matrices for single quantum coherences and double quantum coherences how we can get the representation in the density operator. So, these different elements occupy different places in the total density operator and whenever they are present we know we have created these elements 
and often when we write the total density operator there will be mixtures of such elements and they will all be present in the so by looking at what elements are present in your density operator you can say which coherences you have created and which coherences are observable and all of that will become helpful in analyzing the results of your NMR experiments. Okay. Now there is one more here and this is 2 IKZ ILZ okay, now both are Z here Z component. Okay. So this is KL and Z and this is 1 minus 1 here and for each of this once more I have to put here K and L K and L. This represents a different kind of a situation we have 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 1. And notice that all the diagonal elements are occupied here okay all the diagonal elements are occupied all off diagonal elements are 0 which means this operator does not represent transverse magnetization or it does not represent coherences between the spins in the individual states. What does it represent? So this represents what is called as ZZ order. Notice while this has to do with the populations this is not the Z magnetization of the any of the particular spins. If you remember for the Z magnetization for a two spin system we if you we, if we were to write IKZ plus ILZ this was the representation for the total Z magnetization of the two spin system and this was simply 1 and minus 1 here and all other elements were 0 and so this was IK Z plus ILZ representing the total magnetization total population difference between the two for the two spins and that was contributing to the total magnetization. But here there is a some sort of a correlation between the populations of the K and L spins and therefore we call it as ZZ order this must be distinguished from the Z magnetization of the two spin system okay yeah. So now to summarize all of this so what we have is thus the basis operators give a physical insight into the spin system because we have seen what the individual operators are how they are represented in the density density operator which elements do they represent and that has gives us a, an indication into what these uh, the individual basis operators represent and which is easy to calculate okay. IZ operator represents the populations and the Z magnetizations. Ix and Iy operators in a multi spin system represent in phase single quantum coherences along the x and y axis respectively okay. And now we saw here today 2 Ikx Ilz, 2 Iky Ilz represent single quantum coherences of k spin anti phase with respect to L along the x and y axis. So notice once again the Kx Lz and Ky Lz. So therefore they are both k magnetizations anti phase with respect to the spin L because that is in the Z but these represent the uh, real and imaginary component or the x and the y axis respectively. Similar interpretations hold good for the L spin single quantum coherences. For instance if I had ILX IKZ and ILY IKZ then they would represent the L spin single quantum coherences. Then we looked at to IKX ILY the two spin products with both transverse components and to IKY ILX to IKX ILX to IKY ILY all of these represent mixtures of double quantum and zero quantum coherences and suitable combinations of these represent pure double quantum and single quantum coherences and we can we have the x components and the y components represented here as well but that is a kind of a convention you cannot actually draw a double quantum and zero quantum coherence on the uh, on the cartesian axis and then we said if we take a 2 ikx ilx plus 2 iky ily represents x component of zero quantum coherence 2 ikx ily minus 2 iky ilx represents y component of zero quantum coherence and then 2 ikx ilx 
minus 2 i k y i l y represents x component of double quantum coherence 2 i k x i l y plus 2 i k y i l x represents y component of double quantum coherence. Then the 2 i k z i l z represents 2 spin z z order this has to be distinguished from the z magnetization as I indicated before. Okay. So, we have now seen the various components of the basis operators products what do they physically mean and the interpretation they can give the insight they can give in the uh, density operator uh, uh, will be useful for understanding the experiments which we will discuss in greater detail for varieties of experiments that we will uh, discuss in greater detail in later classes. But this forms the basis for understanding all of those experiments. Okay. So, in the next class we have to see how these evolutions, how these basis operators evolve with time because that is the what is required to be calculated when you require the response of your spin system through the pulse sequence and that we will stop here and that will be taken care in the future classes.